My name is Michelle Bosch. I'm the wildlife manager at Woody Cape Wildlife. Originally from Queenstown, but relocated to Port Elizabeth in 2006, where I later matriculated and graduated with a degree in game ranch management in 2017. It's only in 2016 when I joined the Woody Cape Wildlife family, where I became the wildlife manager at Glenfillan which is our other wildlife property closer to the coast. Earlier this year, I moved to Burlington, where I now also manage the wildlife on this property. At Woody Cape Wildlife, we proud our, ourselves in the genetic quality and overall quality of the animal. We have acquired a large a variety of genetic quality of sable that we have in our two breeding camps at the moment. We have white flank impala and black impala and also common impala camps and then of course our specialty the buffalo we have at the moment it's a total of 353 buffalo besides from breeding we have a commercial area where we offer hunts to hunters who are accommodated by professional outfitters we have a four-star lodge to accommodate these hunters as well as travelers and guests. As the wildlife manager I have an enormous responsibility towards the wildlife in keeping them healthy and ensuring they maintain their overall health throughout the year. In addition to the overall monitoring of the animals we do do soil and water analysis on all of our properties. This ensures that we know what these animals are taking in on a daily basis and also if we can help them with additional minerals or supplements. We recently acquired roughly 150 hectares of previously owned governmental land from our neighbour who we are in partnership with. We do provide the infrastructure and the training of the staff where he provides the land. We strongly believe in a strict biosecurity system for all our wildlife, especially the buffalo. This ensures that we keep our disease-free status and it gives the clients a sense of security that they will receive healthy, disease-free buffalo. The most exciting aspect of the industry for me personally is the breeding side of it. As we specialize in acquiring those top genetics. It's amazing to see all the years of hard work and what the, res what the results can give you. And we, we can see the difference in the genetic quality. As genetics is a, a powerful tool that you need in your herds. Being part of the Woody Cape Wildlife team is an incredible opportunity. It provides me with opportunities to learn daily and I get to do what I love and being a young woman in this interest in this industry it is challenging it does have its its challenges there's no doubt about it but if you have the will and if you have the passion there's nothing stopping you you can you can do what you want We wanted a place as a getaway. Um, my wife commented she wanted a, a stoop in the Karoo. And um, we knew when we saw Falkorp that uh, this is where we wanted to be. That was in, in a 2006. As it turns out, um, breeding small antelope and first eclipse springers, which is we consider our, our halo species, um, they they happened because they were on the farm and um, into, we, we need a little bit of diversity so um, we included blue dikers which of course aren't indigenous to this area but we managed to get them to adapt and then our last species is uh, which used to be here, used to be quite plentiful in this area. We've got eight camps and they all run north-south with um, 
and they're all a hectare. Each one's a hectare and then they run north-south with their typical sort of terrain, typical vegetation. From day one, we, um, we've had five strands of electrification at the top of the 2.4 fence and the perimeter fence on these eight hectares is um, 75 mil I sift to the top. So five strands at the top and a strand at the bottom. Basically what we've done is the, 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 the camp's got a breeding pair and their offspring are what we sell. It wasn't really about the financial benefits, you know. This is more about uh, a, a bit of a passion and a sense of fulfillment. We certainly do believe that what we're doing is good for nature, good for Falco and good for us. We don't live here permanently. So while we try and spend as much time as we can, um, we rely on our foreman Willem Kombani to look after the farm and the animals. Day-to-day -day management issues he takes care of and does so very competently. Every animal that's sold here he benefits from. I think for me the most exciting aspect of game farming would be that uh, there's, there's huge potential and breeding small game is part of that. This little small game uh, um, breeding program has now got people visiting it um, to see how we do it and just general public who might be wanting a career experience. At, at Falkup, the, the interest in, in the breeding program had to be um, uh, diversified from a bit and, and that um, sustainable usage of the resources here became quite important in that um, we were able to offer visitors an experience on the, the balance of the farm. If you have a love for animals and you enjoy working with animals and you enjoy working in nature, there's great satisfaction that can be derived from a program like what we're busy with. For me to see a buyer sending videos of releasing animals that he's bought from us gives me, um, gives me a lump in my throat. I like to think that we've given Falk more value and I think that ultimately we just get acres here and one day we'll move on, our choice maybe, uh, but we will leave Falk a better place. We at Buffalo Club started here in, in as far back as 1999. Uh, a lot of people only think we've only been in the game 10 years, but we started in 99 and bought the first property here, um, which was just south of Gramstown. We fenced the first property and we brought in sort of playing game species like eland and uh, got some incredible eland genetics here through just through luck really. Um, and kudu, and we obviously had the, the, the uh, indigenous species here. So we've been in the game breeding as such for maybe 20 years, but the, for the high value game we started in 2009 and obviously the endangered species around about the same period. We're very fortunate here. The, 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 the property is it's an incredible property. It's, uh, it's got some of the most uh, incredible albany thicket um, in the area to broken open savanna to um, a lot of kloofs um, and we've got the two rivers. The Port Alfred River starts here in the, in the property and the, the Blowcrons joins in further to the south. So we, through even these tough droughts that we've experienced the last six or seven years, we've been fortunate that we, we haven't got a water problem. The main activity of Buffalo Kloof is, um, is definitely outfitters. So we are an outfitter now. We've been in the business for four, four, four years as our fifth year going to the shows. We've come up with a um, statement uh, which goes conservation with class and hunting with thought. Um, 
because I realized running a big, um, a big property like this, there's no ways we can sustain this without the, the, the help of um, ethical hunting. Um, I'm a believer in it. You know, my goal here is to breed a uh, hundred rhino, and that's free-ranging animals. And without the hunting contribution to this to this operation, it cannot take place. Buffalo Kloof has become a, uh, a Roland Ward outfitter, which, as far as to my knowledge, there's only three in South Africa. Um, so our focus is on on ethical hunting, on sustainable uh, utilisation. You know, obviously from the black rhino to, through elephants, through the, all the big mammals, the buffalo, we, we're quite unique. We've got an incredible amount of species here on our hunting side. We're more looking to do the extensive breeding on this property. A lot of the Eastern Cape is extensive. Um, next year we're bringing lion in, we'll be a big farm hunting reserve. Um, one, of, one of, I think, only two or three in South Africa. And at Buffalo Kloof, we've got a significant um, community engagement here. My idea is to create a, a big five hunting destination that had to come with, we had to overcome many challenges. One was a community aspect. Um, we had a, a farm just to the east of us that was owned by government. There's 25 families there. To approach them if, well, five, six years ago now to try and get this um, rep off the ground, which is a black rhino expansion um, range project to increase habitat for black rhino. So we went, to the, we went to them and we said, look, we'd like to bring black rhino into the, pro into the property. They had about 1,300 hectares, which we've taken over 890. And we um, pay them a rental, which is important. They also partake in the black rhino um, project. We uh, employ three of, their, three of their people, do fence patrols, we patrol the fences 24 hours a day. The most exciting thing that's that happens on this farm, I think, is, is my staff. My staff have been incredible yeah, to, to this property. We, we, for the size of the property, we've got a very small staff and everybody chips in, everybody does a bit of everything. I take pleasure in, in the fact that, that guys have started, they've stayed with me, they've stayed with this project. Um, it's a long-term, you know, this is a long-term journey. This. And to see guys that have, are benefiting in, in a little way, you know, in our small way, we upskilling people and we we're making their lives better than it was. So I take a lot of pride in that. Also, obviously, to drive around now and uh, walk into, stumble into the black rhino, uh, the elephants, uh, the cheetah. All these things bring fulfilment to me. That that after these years, that it's finally kind of kind of coming together.